Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Gamera series with Gamera vs. Gauss, which I have on the same DVD as Gamera vs. Virus, which is the next film in the franchise. Now, I got this DVD before I ended up getting this DVD set, which contains all the Gamera films, with the exception of Gamera the Brave. Now, this is the third film in the Gamera franchise, released in Japan in 1967, the the film was later released in North America under the title Return of the Giant Monsters. Now, I've never seen that version of the film. I have seen the original Japanese version, and I saw the Sandy Frank dub of the movie, which was released in the 80s, because that was one of the Gamera films that was riffed on Mystery Science Theater 3000. Which, by the way, if you ever get a chance, definitely check out the Gamera episodes of MST3K. They're freaking brilliant. Now, the previous film, Gamera vs. Barugan, was an attempt to take the series in a darker direction and gear it more towards adults, whereas the first Gamera film kind of didn't really know what it wanted to be. Like, it sort of straddled that line between being a serious monster film and being sort of a goofy kids film. But when Gamera vs. Barugan underperformed, Daie, the company that made all these movies, decided to gear this film more towards children. So, they brought back Noriaki Yulasa, who directed the first Gamera film, to direct Gamera vs. Gauss, and he would go on to direct all of the other Shoha Gamera films. And the film is once again written by Nissan Takahashi, who wrote the first two movies and would go on to write the rest of the series in the Showa era. And this is the movie that introduces the character of Gauss, who is considered to be Gamera's greatest antagonist. Basically, Gauss is to Gamera what King Ghidorah is to Godzilla, like he's his greatest adversary, he's his arch-nemesis. Basically, in this movie, Gauss is a giant vampire bat that could shoot sonic beams out of his mouth that could cut through solid objects like a knife through butter. Now, Gauss was made as sort of Daie's answer to Toho's Frankenstein films. Toho had two Frankenstein movies, Frankenstein Conquers the World and War of the Gargantuas, which took the Frankenstein mythos originated by Mary Shelley and applied it to their kaiju universe, creating a kaiju version of the Frankenstein monster. So, Gauss was meant to be a kaiju version of Dracula. Now, this is also the first Gamera movie to establish Gamera as the hero of the series. In the first movie, he was a villain, even though there were some implications that this creature wasn't completely evil, especially the scene where he saves the little boy, Toshio, in the first movie. In the second film, Gamera was basically an anti-hero, where he wasn't necessarily good, he was just defending his territory. But in this movie, Gamera is basically the hero, and this is also the movie that introduces Gamera's theme song. Yes, Gamera gets a theme song in this movie. It doesn't play till the end of the film, but yeah, he has a goofy theme song at the end of the film. So, the plot of Gamera vs. Gauss is it's set sometime after the events of Gamera vs. Barugan. Basically, in this movie, Mount Fuji erupts, and Gamera, who feeds on fire, is attracted to this. Meanwhile, there's this construction company that's trying to build a roadway through this farming village by Mount Fuji, and the farmers are refusing to sell their land, so the farmers and the construction workers are clashing over this, but eventually a giant vampire bat dubbed Gauss is released from this cave, and now it terrorizes Japan, and the JSDF tries to stop this creature, but ultimately Gamera becomes the last hope. Now, Kojiro Hongo, who played the main character in the previous film, he comes back in this movie to play the foreman of these construction workers, and he's pretty good in the movie. His character in this movie is not as complex as his character from the previous film, but he does do a good job in this film. Then you have the character of Ichi, who's sort of the analog to the character of Toshio from the first one, and he's a much more likable character than Toshio, and he's definitely not as irritating as the little kid characters that we'll get in the later Gamera films. 
At least if you watch the original Japanese version, he's not that annoying, at least in my opinion. If you watch one of the dubbed versions, that's a different story. I honestly could have done without those two comic relief characters. If you've seen the movie, you know exactly which characters I'm talking about. I actually think it would have been kind of hilarious to see them get eaten by Gauss. Now, as far as the human story in the film goes, it's certainly not as good as the human story in Gamera vs. Barugan, but it's definitely better than the human story in the first Gamera film. My issue with the human story, however, is it doesn't really seem to have a lot of consequence with the monster plot. I mean, it's not like these construction workers are the ones who released Gauss because Gauss was released by Mount Fuji erupting, unless they were trying to imply that by working on this highway, it somehow triggered this eruption, but I didn't really get that impression from the film. And it almost seems like the film was trying to have sort of a critique on capitalism, where you have this big corporation coming in trying to industrialize this rural area. The issue with that, however, is the villagers in the film actually end up being kind of the bad guys, where it turns out they actually were willing to sell their land, they just wanted to jack up the price. So, it seems like the film is trying to have a commentary on greed, like the previous one did, but again, it doesn't really have any consequence to the monster story. Also, one moment that I have to point out, basically one of the ways that Ichi comes up to stop Gauss, in order to lure Gamera there to fight Gauss, he gets the idea to set fire to the woods to bring Gamera there, and the adults actually listen to him. So is the movie saying, yay, deforestation? Another issue with this film is like the first one, it seems like this one really doesn't know what it wants to be, like, it sort of straddles that line between being a serious monster film and a goofy kids film. Like, you do have a lot of goofy shit in this movie, like the scene where Gamera saves Ichi and then puts him on his back, and like, the goofy theme song that shows up at the end of the movie. Also, there's a scene in this movie where Gauss slices through this car with one of his beams, yet half of the car is still driving. Granted, you do see that the engine wasn't damaged, but still, it's a really silly scene. But then you have all these horrifying scenes of Gauss eating people, and again, the whole subplot of the villagers versus the construction workers, which was clearly aimed more for the adults watching the movie. So again, it feels like the film doesn't really know what it wants to be. Now, the fight scenes between Gamera and Gauss are definitely the highlight of the movie, despite the fact that you could clearly see the strings in a few shots. And for a movie that's intended more for kids, the fights get surprisingly brutal with Gamera biting on Gauss and Gauss slicing through Gamera's hand with one of his sonic beams. So, Gamera vs. Gauss, despite being a little uneven, I do think it's a solid kaiju film, but it's not one of my favorites. But it is probably the last decent Gamera film of the Showa era, because it gets... Pretty bad after this. Now, an alien version of Gauss would show up in 1969's Gamera vs. Giron. Gauss, or technically multiple Gausses, ended up being the main antagonist of 1995's Gamera Guardian of the Universe. They would also show up in Gamera 3 Revenge of Iris and Gamera the Brave. Now, supposedly Gauss also inspired the creator of Attack on Titan to create that series. Now, the main antagonist of the 2014 Godzilla film, the Mutos, I always felt that their heads kind of resembled Gauss's head, so I always wondered if their heads were meant to be sort of a visual reference to Gauss. So, that was my review on Gamera vs. Gauss, and my next review will be on Gamera vs. Virus. Oh boy.